guys, welcome back to another week of mobility. Today, we are going to work on a bit more of the chest, some abs, and getting down into the hip flexors and quads today. Um, look, we're just progressively working through things at the moment. You will start to see some repetitive movements. It's just the way it is. Simple is best, okay? Um, you might see a little bit of uh, Indy floating around as well. She's walking around the gym with me tonight. So yeah, look, we're gonna loosen things up across this chest. When that chest is tight, we start to restrict that range of motion and it can't pull back as hard. We can't actually utilize our pulling movements and we can't press as hard as we used to. We also can't get overhead properly. If this is tight, it drags everything down. So we need to be able to pull that arm into position. And um, yeah, the same with the, the abs and around those oblique areas too. When, when this is tight, it pulls everything down this way and we compensate by pushing our hips back into a lordotic sort of position. So we're gonna spend today working around these areas and um, essentially working across that hip a little bit too. So you can loosen up and feel better overall, okay? I'm gonna start you guys off with some foam rolling. We'll get right into it. As per usual guys, we start off with some foam rolling. Now, uh, we're going to do a basic one tonight where we spend about a minute on each of the muscle groups. Again, if you're doing this before a class, you can do the about a minute or two on the roller or bike and then come over and do your foam rolling that we're going through for maybe 30 seconds to a minute and then hit the target areas that we're looking at for the certain stretches and trigger points that we're hitting. Um, if you're someone who just is stuck for time, look, make sure you get a quick row in, quick movement of the muscles, make sure everything's feeling good and then hit the triggers that we're looking for, okay? Don't ever just go straight in and start triggering. It's, no, it's like you can do it, but it doesn't actually do any benefit, as, as much benefit as it can if you get a bit warmer, okay? So we're gonna start with a foam roll. We're gonna start up high and work our way down. So the foam roll we're gonna start with is actually gonna be around that chest area. We're gonna start front on, lying on it, and we're gonna go over the top of the chest and work our way down. Um, we're looking to try and smash that pec tissue. Now, I get some of you aren't gonna wanna smash that. That's fine, you don't need to roll all the way over there. You can start rolling on the side here and then go down that serratus that we're looking for, okay? So this is what we're looking for, guys. We wanna be, um, go this way. So we wanna be down, like I said, chest down, arm is up, and we're just gonna be doing some sweeps, okay? Getting some sweeps over the top of that, just to sort of loosen it up. Now, if you're not comfortable being on the top of it, you can go side onto it, and then just work the ribs underneath it. That's where we go next, right? So we're starting to hit this area here. All right, I'm just gonna start moving that up and down. Go over to the front area, so you wanna hit into that abdominal area just gently. All right. And then we start to work into the oblique area as well, so on the side, just sit into it, roll a little bit. So again, like, you're gonna do about like from top to bottom, you can take about two minutes, all right? We're then gonna work down the quad and we're gonna do an ITB hit as well, okay? So we, for the quad hit, we're starting just below the hip, all right? Get that roller on the hip and you're just gonna do sweeps up and down, all right? And then you'll turn the angle of that leg to get different parts of the quad. Right, different sides. You get nice and high up in that hip. And really start to open it up, okay? Once we've done that bit, we're gonna hit the ITB, so the iliotibial band, bit on the side here. Same deal, we'll even start just below the knee and work our way up. This one you can spend a bit more time on. You can actually spend like five to 10 minutes just doing this. And this can loosen up your knees, your hips, just really make everything feel a whole lot better, okay? So again, Get some weight on there, just below the knee. We're just thinking, like you can do long sweeps if you want, if you're just doing this as a warm up before you hit your hip flexors, or you can start to rock side to side, really get that tissue uh, loosened up and moving around. Start to really flow through, find the areas that are a bit more gross and just hang out there. All right? you're not trying to make yourself hurt, you're just trying to make those areas that are tight loosen up a bit, okay? So again, that's our pieces that we're gonna to use to warm the muscle tissue up before we get into anything too dramatic. 
Uh, from here we're going to start looking at doing some stretches across that chest and around that ab area and then we'll start looking at um, some trigger points and being able to get the triggers into the hips and quad. Alright, our first one is involving the big blue ball. So if you're doing this at home, you can do it with a trigger ball. Uh, it works better with this one. This one's slightly bigger, like if you see it side on, it's a slightly bigger ball. Um, and we're trying to hit this anterior compartment, so it's just in where your shoulder, like for most people, you'll see your shoulder dips in a bit. Where that shoulder starts to dip in, that's the area we're gonna hit. We're gonna work our way across the top of that pec. We're gonna work our way down the center in here as well where that tissue connects. Then we're gonna go all the way back out. We'll start to hit that interior delt just a little bit too, just to loosen it up. All right, it's a fairly simple procedure, fairly simple process. All we're gonna do is we're gonna lie on that ball, we're gonna move the arm around and make that tissue open up and sort of start to activate. So if you were to just put your hand there and you move your arm up and across and out, you'll, see, you'll feel that muscle work, right? That's what we're doing here. We're gonna lie down on this, we're gonna put some weight into it, we're gonna move that arm around so it stretches out, we're gonna move it across so it starts to stretch, so it's contract in, and then, um, yeah, we're gonna grind through different parts of this tissue, okay? So, let's have a look at what it looks like. So, we're down here, on the floor, get into that anterior compartment that I was talking about, so not on the delt, just inside it. Put some pressure on it, really get your chest into it. And you're gonna put your arm down by your side, work it up and around so it'll start to glide underneath that chest a bit, and then back around again. So we can start to move the arm around, up. All right, so as you come through it, it's gonna feel like your arm's gonna come up here, and it's just gonna pull the pec in a position that it'll feel like it's on its side it's gonna come back out to the front again, okay? That's what we're looking at doing with this movement. So we're doing this, you're gonna do this for about two minutes, right? Spend a long time here. This is the muscle that is super tight, that helps, that pulls your shoulders forward. All right, you're gonna spend some time here, grease that groove. Once you've done a little bit there, we're gonna hit closer to the middle of that collarbone, just below where your collarbone hits in the center there. Hit just below that, right? Get on top of it, pressure in, arm around. Start to move that tissue around. Really feel it tight. Again, one minute, two minutes. Move down a bit, hitting in that middle of that chest. Move that tissue around. Stretch it out. Really get some weight in on that ball. And again, you're not trying to create pain. You're trying to create pressure in an area that's tight and then have that tissue open and close contract, stretch, so that you can then be able to use it more freely, right? It's starting to try and loosen up some of the debris that might be caught in there and um, have it move so that it feels a whole lot better, okay? So that's our first bit we're gonna do with this chest stretch. Um, like I said, you can spend like six, seven, eight minutes doing this, right? Two minutes here, two minutes there, two minutes here, two minutes there. And then you'll come all the way back out and you're gonna hit right on the front of that shoulder and still do the same movements, right? Around and back up. It's all gonna feel the same, okay? So that's where we're starting with that uh, chest. When we're looking for another stretch, what I like to do is, I like to get us into a stretch that can also open up the abs and the thoracic spine. So um, for those of you that are part of the gym, you'll do these quite a bit with Romwad. If you haven't done Romwad before, um, yeah, look, I'll just show you the position that we're getting into, all right? So ideally, you're gonna lie down on the floor, you're gonna keep your chest nice and flat to it, and you're gonna bring your other leg around towards that hand, okay? So, you're here, arm is out to the side, and this leg is gonna come around. So, I'll go up this way so you can see as well, here, right? And then this arm's gonna come around. This leg is coming around. Now, when you do this, you wanna avoid letting that shoulder jank through. You wanna keep that shoulder blade squeezed tight. Keep the chest out proud while you do it, okay? So, you get down on that floor, hand out, let's go right here, hand out, okay? And then we're gonna squeeze that shoulder back and open up, okay? And that's it, you're just gonna hold that for about two minutes one side, and out the other way, shoulder back, squeeze, and then about two minutes the other side. So if you run through just that chest stretch that we went through and the big blue ball across the top, down and into that delt, your shoulder's gonna be a whole lot more free, be able to press more, you'll feel a lot less shoulder pain, 
things will just start to feel a whole lot more relaxed around the shoulder. We're gonna start to look at what we can do around the abs here. And honestly, most of it's just a deal to do with stretching. And um, for today, we're, we're just gonna do a, a basic stretch with this. But the whole idea is to be able to maintain the position for it, okay? Um, a lot of people put too much pressure on the hips coming forward. We're looking at more this chest rising position, okay? So essentially it's called a seal pose. So when you're lying down on the floor, again, let's get in a position where you can see me. So when you're lying down on the floor, all you're looking at, keeping everything nice and tight, hips are towards the floor, but you're just gonna raise that chest up and push the floor away. Again, you're not looking for pain, you're not looking for anything else, you're just pushing the floor away. This is looking to stretch out your abdominals. That's it. Hold this for two minutes. If you can't hold it for two minutes, hold for one, relax. Or we'll hold for 30 seconds and then relax. And then press back up again. Quality is far better than anything, right? You want good quality stretches. If you're just hanging out here, or you get up and you start doing these ones, yeah, that's good. But what starts to happen is you put so much focus on your hips coming towards the ground that you start to lose what's happening in that abdominal area and we lose that chest up position, okay? If you are someone who is a bit more flexible and you can press tall and get that abdominal stretch, this is a great position to be in, okay? Don't fall into the position thinking that you have to go up here though. This, with that chest tall, will get more than enough stretch of the abdominal area, okay? That's what we're looking at. Um, from here, we're gonna move into the hip flexors. Okay, hip flexors, uh, they're a tough one, okay? So, essentially your quadricep runs across the hip. Hip flexors are something that makes your hip, makes your, your knee raise up, right? So, we're looking at all of these heads of the quadricep muscle. Um, we're gonna target just below uh, the bony part of your hip here and around. And we're also gonna run our couch stretch today as well. And then we'll call it there for today on this, all right? So, with regards to this um, piece with the trigger point around your hip flexor, it's going just below the bony part of your hip, the ASIS, right? So find the bony part of your hip, just sit it just below that. That's the point we wanna hit and possibly even a little bit lower if you want to, okay? While we work our way around, we're gonna keep working around this way and you can go up a little bit or you can go down a little bit. It's anywhere in this sort of space that we're trying to loosen up. And remember, this will be different for each person. Some people, it'll be like really high. Other people, it'll be really low. Our goal here is to make sure that you're feeling like it's going to loosen up some tissue, okay? So let's have a look at where we're at. So I've got this ball just below bony part of my hip, all right? I'm gonna lie down on it. I'm gonna put some pressure on it, and for me that feels kind of good where it is. Now, if it feels good, that doesn't mean that I have to move off it. It's good to actually make sure that all these things are feeling okay. So I can hang out there for a minute, two minutes, and make sure that's good, that when I sit into it, it doesn't actually start to feel a bit more pressure, because we, we tend to resist off it a bit. But that's okay, so from there, what we can do is we can move over to the side of it, okay? And grind it over a bit. Now, that one there is a bit more gnarly for me, and it has a little bit more tissue that it's tense, I can feel it, it's bounced up there, it's not, it's not happy with me that I've put some pressure on it. So I'm gonna just let that relax a bit. And for me, I'm feeling this up into my side here too, right? So I'm getting into an area where it's creating some tension in my, in my trunk. And by loosening this, this is gonna make it easier for me to move when I'm doing things with my midline as well, right? So the whole idea here is just to relax, Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, and spend some time here, two minutes. You don't need to oscillate around, you just gotta sit in and let it release. Once that's released, we're gonna move over a bit, okay? And we're gonna sort of find that space, okay? This one again, nice and tight for me. And just sit into it, and eventually you'll feel it sink in a little bit. That's what we want, we wanna sink into it and just drop. Okay? So, that's what we're looking for with this, right? That is gonna loosen up a whole lot of tissue for you and you'll be able to, even if you don't do the stretches on that, that alone is gonna make a world of difference, all right? On our next hit, I'm gonna show you how to loosen up those hips with a Samson stretch and a couch stretch.
All right, so the Samson stretch is fairly straightforward, guys. We've done this a fair bit. Um, I'll do this one here and then I'm gonna move us over to the wall shots and show you the couch stretch. And I'll show you the couch stretch nice and low. We did it on our first week, we're gonna do it again. Um, so our Samson stretch, we're gonna have on one knee, other legs in front of us. We're gonna have knee, hip, and shoulder all in line. And our goal here is to try and push this hip forward, not arch my back, right? I'm trying to push this hip forward a touch. Good, now, and that's, that's it, that's all I need to do. Now, if I want more out of that, I drive the hip closer to the ground, all right? So again, I'm here, I'm just pushing that hip further and further forward. I'm not arching my back and pulling my chest out, pretending or, or feeling like I'm getting better. Now, for someone with fairly good mobility, you could possibly um, pull that leg back behind you and grab a hold of your foot too to do your, essentially your couch stretch there. I'll see if I can pull it off today. Yep, here we go. So chest nice and tall, hold that position, and that'll give you your couch stretch just there. So I'm holding onto that back foot there. This is one that you wanna hold for a minimum of two minutes and then change legs. Okay, so again, if I was to do it this way here, I would grab that leg, chest nice and tall. And that, you feel from your hip all the way down to your knee if you've got tight quads, all right? So that is our Samson stretch and our little bit of a couch stretch. We're gonna look at the couch stretch next. We've done this before. Um, it's tough, it needs to be held for a minimum of two minutes, okay? I'll show you that in the next clip. All right, so here we are again. Uh, ready for our couch stretch. The whole idea with this, guys, is um, like we just showed with getting the foot behind, we're looking for creating some tension in that quad and across that hip, creating some, some tension across that, that hip flexor muscle and forcing it to stretch open a little bit. The longer you hold it and the more you sit into it, the better it gets. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your foot against the wall, the other foot's gonna come out, and then you're gonna start to sit up, right? So, foot against the wall, other foot up, and then if this is as far as you can go, that's it. If you've got the ability to sit up nice and tall, we sit up nice and tall. And you hold that for about two minutes, okay? Hang out, have a conversation with someone. This is something you can do on your couch, okay? Pop your knee on the couch, foot against the back of the couch, other foot sits across the front and is just standing you up tall. Hang out there while you watch TV, guys. That's why it's called the couch stretch. Hold it for a couple of minutes, hands go back down, other leg comes out of the way, knee down, we're relaxed, okay? If you run through all of these drills this week, guys, you will end up feeling a whole lot looser across your hips and shoulders, guaranteed. That's it for today, guys. Look, if you can run through these things and take your time across the chest, get some regular stretching across that belly and run through the stretches for your quads and hip flexors at least a few times throughout this week, you are gonna feel a whole lot better. You're gonna feel freer, your shoulders are gonna feel amazing for pressing, pulling, anything that, you've, that you're gonna run into. And you're also gonna make sure that your knees feel great from the relieving the tension in your quads. If you can't make it into doing all of these things, I strongly recommend a few things. One, getting in that chest stretch on the floor. Two, getting in the ITB roll on the side of the leg, and three, getting in your couch stretch this week. If you can get those three things in twice this week for at least two minutes on each hit, you will feel better in each of those uh, joints, okay? The hips will feel better, the abs will feel better, and your shoulders will start to feel better. If you like what you're seeing, guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, do all the fun stuff. That helps the channel get uh, a little bit more support. Thanks for watching. See you next week.